Hey Megalithomaniacs, how you doing? We're at a site in Greece, which is kind of on the road between Argos and Mycenae, and it's a place called Argiv Herions. Um, it's an interesting site. We spotted it. We just went in, we just followed the signs up here. Didn't know anything about it to start with, but we've realized it's like at least from 700 BC and it was fortified potentially in Mycenaean times, although it's claimed officially at 700 BC and it's got later Greek classical era kind of structures on it uh, and so forth. So we're going to take a, go up there and take a closer look. We've had a good look from the air. We'll, we'll, we'll introduce you to it from the sky and we're going to let you enjoy this site with some music um, so you get a sense of the landscape the scale of some of the sites and this is only a mile or two from Mycenae as well so if you're going to visit Mycenae you might want to take a diversion and check this out so enjoy so the site is in quite a ruinous state we see examples of like columns down on the ground there and look at this like really hard basalt type rocks here as well we'll just take a walk down the lower level of the site first there's no information boards there's nothing about this but we do see some quite wonderful ancient greek pillars here which we haven't seen many of because we're sticking to the megalithic era sites but these are kind of cool. Look at these. You have these quite large blocks behind the pillars over here. So, you know, we've got high level of uh, stone construction. You see these extremely large blocks. Look at these. So it would have made up the outer wall of this particular temple. And some of the detail on here is really quite nice. It really is a treat to be up here kind of all on our own. I mean, and it's free entry, so you can kind of enjoy it at your leisure. But we're gonna head up the hill and we can start to see here actually some of the larger kind of more ancient megalithic blocks this is kind of what we're interested in fascinated by the greek stuff obviously but we have a kind of megalithomaniac's agenda you can see how neatly cut some of this stone is here although i'm not sure if this is a reconstruction this certainly isn't this looks ancient from its uh, weathering You can see there's another temple here with pillars all over it. Kind of reminds me of being in like Mexico, exploring obscure out of the way pyramid sites. And it is a bit pyramid like, it has step pyramid kind of design to it really, going up the side of a hill in front of the mountain with bedrock there. Up here we get the much larger stones. I popped in here last night just to check it out, see if it was worth visiting and we thought it was. a way in there I'm not gonna go in but it could be a cistern more likely but we're gonna go up the side of this to get to the higher level where the cyclopean megalithic blocks are at the top there this is kind of what we're here for you can see these are huge also get a great view from up here it's a conglomerate kind of limestone blocks
we're just up here with JJ Ainsworth who's making a little video for YouTube apparently it's a long one she's already 20 minutes in we don't know anything about this site it's kind of exciting and weird to be here but we do know that look, you can just see the size of these megalithic blocks this is seriously cyclope cyclopean again all the way along there and you can see JJ there we're just standing along the edge of this cyclopean wall this seems to be the oldest part of the site it's also the largest part of the site it appears this is a cyclops temple and it was later added to by Mycenaeans and other groups but just look at the size of this block on top here I mean, we see this from the air with the drone but that is absolutely humongous so we are absolutely mind-blowing mega blocks up here in this unknown site really certainly no one's interested in visiting it no one's here so we have this outer wall here and you can just see the way these have been put together this is not a simple operation i mean these are actually some of the largest megaliths i've seen here in greece these are absolutely huge look at the size of these these are incredible they're like just megalithic dolmens all just shoved together into one massive platform and it makes you question is this mycenaean or is this earlier structure that became revered by the mycenaean and other cultures or, or what is it i mean look at this this is absolutely huge this is one of this is one of the most impressive megalithic sites i've actually been to in greece in all of europe and they say it was built in the 700s bc i'm not so sure this looks like it's thousands of years old absolutely thousands of years old it's badly weathered some of the blocks are outrageously big probably up to 80 tons some of these so this is definitely going to include this on the tour because this is just too impressive we didn't realize this it was one of them chance encounters because it's near mycenae and no one probably visits it they'll go there instead mycenae rather So we're seeing some rocks here that look like hard kind of basalt, almost andesite looking. And you can see they've been very finely cut, very well carved. It makes you wonder who was really here, who was building this massive cyclopean site. In this bunch of rocks here, we have what look like keystone cuts. We have other shapes, more kind of keystone cut shapes here on the edge of these rocks and a big pillar in the middle there we even have these small protrusions here that are like the knobs or the bosses you find on the peruvian stone walls very interesting we have other things in these piles as well other carvings and look we have kind of swastika carvings shapes carved into the rocks so how old are these are these the era of the cyclops mycenae or is it classical greek 700 bc hellenistic onwards very, very intriguing site we have more of the protrusions carved onto this rock here just just sort of the face that's in the shade there this is very interesting this place it's, it's completely ruined no one's here we're the only ones here at this site and there's lots of little bits of strange evidence suggesting high technology and oh my goodness we have clear 
very clear keystone cuts here. Look at these. Look at these. These are just like the Egyptian ones. These are just like what you find at Philae Temple and other places. Look, absolutely classic keystone cuts. Wow. Other ones over here. It's almost like being at Tiwanaku, this place. And we have these beautifully cut stones just lying around, showing evidence of high technology. On the bottom here, you can see like swastikas carved into the stone. So just at the base of this temple here, it's just been well spotted by JJ. Two pigeons. Now these are probably represent representations of carrier pigeons and it's known that in the ancient Greek world they would fly often hundreds of miles a day to send messages from one area to another and they're also a representation of ancient surveying and geodetic techniques and this is something we find even relating to Noah's Ark and Mount Ararat where a pigeon was sent off to find land and to send messages to others the fact that we're finding it here is very very interesting because it relates to a very early very interesting um, ancient culture here so is this part of the cyclopean culture the mycenaean culture or more classical greek we also have what looks like a massive carved hole there in the block suggesting they were working with certain types of technology we also have this beautiful shaping of the rock here on this particular block and many others and it's just an incredible site really i think we have to you know not take this for granted it's one of those sites in greece that gets completely ignored especially because it's near mycenae we have another keystone cut here just walking around the site seeing them now So we have very interesting things going on at this site. We have keystone cuts like we find in Egypt and Peru and Bolivia and other places. We have swastika carvings. We have the pigeon carvings, which suggest evidence of surveying, ancient surveying, which uh, create especially triangles in the vast landscape. We have cyclopean blocks mixed with very intricately carved basalt type stone and we have what appears to be some kind of pyramidical structure going up the hill. So this is very, very intriguing. We have this rough hoon piece over here. We're going to go and have a quick look at this. Looks like it could be very ancient. So we're just checking out this small platform here, which looks it's made of the same kind of conglomerate rock as the mega platform at the top, which appears to be super ancient. And it does kind of have cyclopean qualities to it. Much like the ones at the top, though the stones are obviously not quite as big. Still very, very, <laughs> very difficult to move, obviously. They're not small. And here we have polygonal masonry. Wow. So we have everything here, pretty much. Look at this. We have precise polygonal masonry. So up the top there, we have the mega cyclopean blocks. Down here, quite large pieces still. We have another platform with very intricate polygonal masonry, which we'll have a proper look at in a moment. Around here, it's quite badly weathered. So we have what appears to be like a kind of step pyramid hill structure. We have another level we're standing on here, again, which could be could have polygonal features, but it's all covered up with grass now. But let's take a look at this wall here, because this is just unique. It's just this one wall, the only one I've seen at the site, that has this particular style. So that is pretty amazing.
you have the main mega platform just up there and then just lower down down below the cyclopean walls we have this beautiful section here of polygonal architecture which we'll uh, we'll go in and take a closer look at in just a second but it's just so much going on here keystone cuts polygonal walls cyclopean construction intricate front carvings it's just really quite a special spot this just getting close to have a look at this this is one one stone there it's just a very high interest look at that it's just incredible just all the way up there this, so this must have been covered up with dirt with mud that's why it didn't get so badly damaged because all the other stone if you look around here this is all conglomerate stone so they would have had to somehow carve this accurately all around here is very badly weathered so it just seems like that was covered up with, with mud or something and you know this is why it didn't get so badly damaged so it makes you think if this this has somehow preserved itself and it's got beautiful polygonal stones in it then perhaps the mega blocks at the top were the same maybe they were huge mega polygonal blocks joined together really accurately and the weathering has just destroyed them i mean that's a, there's a good case for that i think by just seeing that pristine piece of wall behind us and so the whole site could have been like that so it could have been mycenaean could have been pelasgian or the danians We have another wall, <laughs> mega sized wall going down the side. This is a bit more neat and tidy. It's a bit less polygonal than the one above it, which is just over there. And then we have the, the mega blocks, obviously the mega platform at the top. So we seem to have on the way down, just as we're leaving the site, we've just seen another platform, another wall. And it seems to have polygonal masonry, although it's very badly weathered clearly some of this is so let's just have a quick close look here before we leave uh, this has surprised us somewhat this site now, although it's rough hewn conglomerate stone you can see some of the shapes here especially that one there with a the little dimple on top so it's very intriguing that we're finding different styles all over this very very interesting site and don't forget to subscribe to the Megalithomania channel. Please like this video, please make a comment, and please press the bell icon so you receive updates. And if you can, please support us with as little as $1 on Patreon and become one of our patrons.